Are you that person who always locks out their forks on the XE climbs? Or are you that person who always uses pro pedal on the enduro climbs? Or perhaps you're that person who has suspension with neither of those functions and you're wondering if you're missing out on some gains. Well, whatever your relationship is with lockout, I'm going to explore what it is, what the pros and cons are, and I've got a few challenges for myself to figure out if I even need it at all. Suspension lockout is, as the name would suggest, a way of locking out your suspension. Although sometimes it's just limiting the movement of the suspension. Now you can have a lever on the forks or the shock itself, or you might even have a lever on your handlebars to actuate this. But basically it will either limit or completely prevent the suspension from moving. And this can be used on smooth surfaces, on climbs or in sprints to make the bike feel more rigid and therefore hold more energy for yourself rather than transferring it into the movement of the suspension. Different suspension will operate a lockout in different ways. If you have a lever like I do here on the RockShox SID, when engaged it'll operate a valve or a mechanism in order to close off the oil flow or perhaps close off the airflow inside the fork in order to stop movement completely so that it gives a nice rigid feel. Some mechanisms are only partial lockout rather than full lockout, which means that you will get some compression and rebound rather than a completely rigid feel. We often find this on rear shocks or rear suspension in the form of a lever. Now this lever could just say firm like I have here. It could be a three way uh, and sometimes it's referred to as pro pedal mode as it gives you a firmer feel but not completely locked out which will offer a little more efficiency on those long climbs up back to a descent. Think of this as a kind of quick way of adding a load of compression damping on just to give you a firmer feel. But Lockout isn't just for XC. Recently, we've seen an uptake in Lockout and partial Lockout for enduro bikes. Even brands like Scott have just released their Genius with a front and rear Lockout lever. Companies like RockShox have released the Flight Attendant, which is technology that automatically engages that partial Lockout on the climbs and then will disengage automatically on the descents. Well, that's all well and good in theory, but how does this affect my riding? Is it a worthy piece of tech that I should have on all of my bikes? Let's find out. So for my first challenge, I wanna see if the partial lockout actually makes any difference to my enduro bike for what looks like a typical enduro fire road climb. So first without the uh, firm mode, and I'm gonna keep my heart rate in zone two, and then I'm gonna pop it into firm mode and see if that gets me up the hill any quicker. Well, let's go, I guess. done. Uh, yeah, I'd say that's short, but a pretty typical enduro climb for me. Um, and usually I would run that without the firm mode because well, it's just a bit more comfortable. But uh, well, let's see what I'm missing out on with firm mode engaged. Right, I'm in the same spot, same gear, firm mode engaged. Let's see if I'm any quicker. Okay, well I definitely feel a difference. Um, there's a lot more buzz through the saddle, uh, but whether it's any quicker or not, I don't know. I guess we'll have to look at the results. 
So the results for that section, uh, the Enduro bike without firm mode engage, uh, it took me four minutes and 20 seconds to get to the top. And then with firm mode engaged, it took me four minutes and 12 seconds to get to the top. So I actually saved eight seconds. Now I know what you're thinking, you probably don't care about saving seconds and time up a fire road climb if you're just enjoying a ride. Uh, but that is free speed effectively. You could ride the same speed at less effort and maybe less effort is important to you. So proof that I think firm mode does actually help. But um, well, let's see what it does on the XC bike. Okay, for my next challenge, I want to do it on the XC bike and I want a longish climb. Uh, I'm doing it on tarmac so that I get rid of any variables of tech that might affect the results. Um, and I'm going to be sat down as well because I think that's realistic over a long climb, but I will do an out of the saddle test next. So anyway, let's get going, shall we? First up with suspension not locked out. Let's go. Well, there we go. A uh, long XC climb without lockout and you know, sometimes I would put my weight quite far forward and sort of bounce and you can feel the suspension bouncing, um, but whether that makes a difference to my pedaling or not, I don't know, better catch my breath and do a locked out version. <laughs> okay, time for a seated long climb on the XC bike. Uh, this time locked out, solid, feels like a rigid bike now. Uh, right, let's get to it. Oh, well. I felt more powerful, but perhaps that was placebo. Uh, I don't know. I didn't feel faster. I just felt powerful. Uh, let's check out the results and see for sure. So the times uh, without the lockout engaged as normal, it was three minutes and 34 seconds. And then with the lockout engaged, it was three minutes and 32 seconds. So I saved a whopping two seconds, uh, which doesn't sound like much, but hey, seconds count when it comes to XC racing. Um, and I'm surprised it was quicker because I actually felt quite tired on that second run. And it was my fourth timed climb of the day as well. And yet I was still faster. So I'm usually quite lazy with using the lockout, um, but I think in my next XC race, I will actually be using it. Uh, but anyway, I think we know the results of the next challenge, the sprint, but uh, well, let's find out. So this is the sprinting challenge and for this I wanted to mimic that finish line sprint in an XC race. So I've got about a 500 foot course here. It's pretty flat, no undulations, very short, uh, a bit gravelly with one corner in it. But I think this looks pretty typical as a finish line sprint. So I want to know whether that lockout is going to make a difference. Uh, well, only one way to find out. Right, sprinting. Not locked out. Let's go. Oh, two gears. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. Last time I think I used a gear Slightly too hard, but to make things fair, I'll stay in the same gear. And let's see, lockout engaged, and let's go. So the 
XC Sprint. Uh, that was interesting. Um, I felt more powerful with the lockout engaged. Uh, a little bit of interest is around the corner where it was a little bit loose and gravelly. I felt the bike wanted to wash out with the lockout not engaged, but it didn't. I just thought it was gonna. I think that was just me sinking into the suspension. But when I had the lockout engaged, I actually did step out a little bit um, and my tires drifted a slight. So, it, I mean, it's a good reminder that suspension does keep traction. Um, but the most interesting part of this is not how I expected it to go, is that the times were exactly the same. So I didn't believe that this was right. So I actually did the test twice. Uh, the first time I got 19 seconds with and without the lockout. And the second time I did it, 20 seconds, both with and without the lockout. So uh, yeah, I guess that concluded that maybe when you're going max effort and sprinting, and maybe when you're on the flat, then a lockout really doesn't add that much, but, as you've seen from the results on the climbs, it does make a difference there. Uh, either saving seconds or just saving watts, uh, which means less effort if you're on enduro um, and a much faster XC race time. So really interesting results and not what I expected. But guys, what do you think about these results? Let me know down in the comments below and let me know whether you're an avid lockout user or not.